This video is sponsored by Global Ordnance. I want to start and preface with this. If you are looking for a detailed gun nerd level review and in-depth dive of the Dan Wesson DWX, you're in the right spot because I'm going to take this thing down, detail strip it. You're going to see what's under the hood. You're going to see what is unique and special about this gun. It's probably one of the longer reviews on there. If you're looking for just wham, bam shooting, there's other cool videos out there from some of my friends as well, but I hope you stick around and really kind of dive deep into what makes this platform special. This thing was first announced in 2019 and in 2019, when I got my hands on it at SHOT Show, I was like, I have to have one of these. Like, I want one. The thing looks great. And those of you guys that know me know that I love single action guns. I love 1911s, 2011s. And I've always had a soft spot for CZs because the ergonomics and everything like that. Uh, so I did pick up a um, TS2. Love that gun. I'll probably do a video about that gun as well. But there was something about the DWX that it just had like everything in, you know, one package. It was like Literally a CZ and a, and a 1911 had a love child. Now we're gonna get into a little bit more details, what I really like, where I think that they could have done things a little different, as well as some kind of tech specs that I haven't seen other people get into, but I'm kind of a gun nerd. So first things first, uh, how does it shoot, right? People wanna know how it shoots. It shoots awesome. It's a heavy gun, okay? So that being said, uh, it, and it, it should be, it's an all metal frame, but as far as like the actual specs, uh, it's a 45 ounce gun, steel frame, steel slide. So yes, it's a, it's a heavy gun compared to some of the other 2011, 1911 style guns out there. But man, this thing shoots so nice. I mean, it shoots really good. It shoots better than I thought it would. Sight tracking, accuracy, even burning some build drills, which I'm not the best build drill shooter. One seventeen, one nine six, one Charlie. This thing shot really, really well. Now I probably have close to about two thousand rounds. You can see that I got a good amount of wear on the barrel, barrel hood, uh, and I had zero issues whatsoever. Like literally none. Uh, now we're gonna get into like some of the tech specs. It uses P10 magazines, which is great. And uh, hang on, I think I might even have some magazines. So out of the box, it's going to come with the firearm and some magazines. Uh, they really like their red. Red trigger, red grips, red base pads. I don't like red on guns. For me, red is like a training color, a cert gun, red gun, you know, even has a term in law enforcement, things like that. So I'm going to swap out all of the red stuff, but I wanted to show it to you in its factory configuration. But it does use P10 magazines that fit flush, and it does use um, the higher capacity uh, P10. And don't worry, YouTube, these are still under whatever. This is like a 20 round mag or 21, maybe something like that. Uh, but it does take the P10 magazines, which is great because these are readily available. They're pretty good price wise and they're a reliable magazine. So I do like that it takes uh, those magazines and they're, you know, readily available, all that good stuff. Now, one of the things that people ask is, you know, what kind of parts does it use? What makes it a 1911? Is it not? Whatever. And my definition of a 1911 isn't necessarily the magazines, uh, but it's the fire control group. And this does have a 1911 fire control group. It's a true straight back trigger press. In fact, uh, I did order a new trigger for it that is black. And you can see that this is the trigger right from Dan Wesson. It is a wide bow 1911, 2011, whatever you want to call it, style trigger. So it does use that, you know, fire control uh, mechanism. Now, the cool thing with this gun is that there is a lot of modularity going on, and I think this is just the beginning of what we're going to see. But on the outside, we have front serrations, rear serrations, great barrel fit. It is a bull barrel, so we don't have to worry about barrel bushings or anything like that. It does come with fiber optic front sight and adjustable rear sight, uh, which mine was zeroed a little bit low. I had to make a few clicks to kind of get it hitting point of aim, point of impact, but it was really easy to do with the adjustable rear sight. Uh, it is serrated on the top, but if you'll notice on the back, here's the one thing. This came out finally in 2022, and obviously when it was announced, then COVID happened, there was a variety of issues. I'm not going to hold them against, or I'm not going to hold that against them for that because uh, there was a lot of the things stacked up against them to get this gun out. But seriously, you have awesome optic mounting systems, CZ and Dan Wesson. You should have put those on here. Like this needs to be an optic ready gun. It is screaming to be an optic ready gun. I realize this is designed for that limited crowd, 
But man, this thing needs to have an optic. And I know that that's coming. I mean, everybody knows it's coming, right? At least we hope it's coming, right? Um, other stuff. Ambi thumb safety. There is no grip safety because it's more CZ-esque. And then on the other side, we do have the magazine uh, release and a slide stop, which has a pretty generous you know, cut. I would like to see it maybe a little larger. Now, one thing I did notice on the slide stop is it does have a nice uh, divot there. So that'll help, you know, with takedown removal and, you know, so we don't scratch up the guns or whatever, but I'm not as worried about that because, you know, as you can see, I already got some, uh, some scratches and signs of use on this because again, I really wanted to use this gun to make sure that it ran. Now, a couple other things to point out is that it does have a full length dust cover and Picatinny rail, which a lot of guys really do seem to like the look of that. It kind of reminds me of some of the older uh, competition guns and stuff, and I definitely like it. It also adds a little bit of weight, which is nice, but look at how nice and clean the front end looks. We have this nice, uh, beautiful crown match barrel. Again, like I told you guys before, it is a bull barrel, but uh, how everything kind of comes together up front is it just overall looks really nice and then the length of the dust cover aligns really well with a flashlight uh, like the surefire here let's take it apart and let's talk about some of the things that i found along the way that i think will be helpful to you all right note for youtube real quick this is cleaning and maintenance okay we're not getting into uh, manufacturing or anything like that this is just simply cleaning and maintenance basic parts diagrams 101 all that kind of stuff now Let's talk about grips uh, because some people said, oh, it just takes CZ 75 grips. And what I found is that it takes uh, CZ Shadow 2 grips and the Shadow 2 grips fit great. They fit right in there like so. Uh, it's flush, works out really sick. So this is a Shadow 2 grip from Lok, Lock. I don't know how to pronounce that, uh, but you can see that it, it fits really really nice and obviously if you can get a shorter version for a magwell and before we talk about magwells i do want to talk about one thing though you would think that because it takes shadow two grips it would take shadow two cz screws it does not it actually takes 1911 screws that 05 by whatever weird thread that nobody has except for 1911 grip companies and like gun shops and stuff so if you're swapping to shadow two grips you need to get 1911 screws. So like all the grips that I ordered from Lok, Lock, whoever you pronounce it, that came with CZ screws, I had to order 1911 screws. So something to note there. Now, speaking of Magwell, because I think that that is a really cool, good question to ask. Uh, this is a Magwell from a TS2, a Tax Sport 2. And this was a little snug, so it did require just a little bit of fitting but it does fit right on there. It feels good in the hand and you can see everything aligns really nicely with the mouth of the magwell and the magwell of the grip or the frame, I should say. So TS2 magwells will work. This is from a, a TS green and uh, you will obviously then need to shorten your grips or get grips that are shorter to accommodate for the magwell. So if you're gonna run a magwell, keep that in mind as you will need to either uh, shorten your grips or order grips that are designed for shorter okay so let's take this thing down i'll show you what's under the hood it is a captured guide rod which is cool so instead of a, a regular 1911 uh, recoil rod where we'd have tools and stuff it is a traditional guide rod and it is a flat wire spring now here's where we start to deviate from the 1911 is it is a linkless style barrel so again we're seeing different technology uh, from other firearms that are kind of going into this this hybrid i really think it is kind of a hybrid firearm uh, bull barrel and the machining on everything you know looks really good i have some good wear on the hood and on the barrel and on the lugs but again i've shot this gun a lot and i have not uh, as you can see i have not cleaned it i just add lube because i wanted to see if the gun would run and and we're we're shooting really good now just another quick sign of uh, quality control. I don't know if you can see inside there. 0654 is the serial number that matches the frame. So the major components, basically once they're kind of matched together, they uh, looks like they were engraving those components to make sure that they stick together throughout coating, fitting, all that other stuff. Slide to frame fit was pretty good. Um, now I will say that it's not as precise as like a high-end 1911, 2011 because there actually is a removable fire control unit that actually comes out of the gun. All right, so the thumb safety comes off 
kind of like a 1911. We do have our spring and detent. So yeah, fit and finish of the thumb safety it is really tight. Like this was a snug uh, fit. These two halves, I mean, they did not want to come apart easily. And even now, um, there is a slot and groove in there. These two uh, pieces fit together really nicely. All right, so up until this point, it pretty much came apart kind of like a 1911. Uh, 1911 looking hammer that comes out, spring, uh, mag, release, make stop, uh, yeah, make catch, makes release, whatever you want to call it. But here's where it starts to get a little different. Check this out. This kind of lifts out and it kept the sear and disconnector in place in this serialized unit. So this is kind of the main receiver of the gun and there's a pin here uh, with, like I said, retaining the sear and disconnector and then this is what actually has the serial number. So I'm curious on what kind of modularity is going to be moving forward with this component where maybe you can buy different grip frames, different configurations, stuff like that. But this is kind of the core of what is going on under the hood. This is the slide uh, rails as well as all on this thing. The frame is just that. It's just a frame and there are no bearing surfaces uh, on here. So again, I'd be curious to see maybe what type of, of things come in the future. Uh, and then this is where the trigger would actually lift out so you can service it because it doesn't come out the rear like a traditional single stack gun. I do want to take a moment to thank our sponsor and that is Global Ordnance. Global Ordnance provides all of the ammunition that I use in my videos and I could not make my videos without the support of Global Ordnance. Their ammunition is super high quality from their sterling steel to the various imports as well as the name brands you know and love. They carry it all at great prices. Plus, if you use the code on our website, you can get free shipping for all orders over 200, which means big heavy cases. They will ship to you for free. Again, that is thanks to our sponsor, Global Ordnance. We could not make the videos without their support. Check out Global Ordnance online and make sure you use our code for free shipping on all orders orders over 200. So it was about this point of the video where my lavalier mic died, so I have no more audio, but we'll talk through it. I did want to fit my trigger, and I found that fitting the trigger was pretty minimal. I did have to take about 10 thousandths off of the replacement trigger, and then it fit right in, so some gunsmithing or armor work might be required. While I had the gun apart, I also noticed that the components that were used, like the sear and disconnector, also looked really good. When I got the gun back together, everything came together just fine, and it assembled mostly like you would expect on a 1911 or a 1911 double stack 2011 style gun. So really no major surprises. If you're an armorer or competent with the platform, you're not gonna be that you know out of water feeling with uh, this type of firearm. So everything came together really nice and overall really impressed with what I saw under the hood. Everything that I would expect from Dan Wesson, things that are consistent with what, I, what I've seen from their 1911 guns. Now, all in all, what I think about the gun overall, these retail for about 2000, and I think you're getting a lot for that $2,000 price point. I again think it's a hybrid. It is more of a unique platform where Dan Wesson is taking their expertise from the CZ line, their expertise from their 1911 line, and combining it with a few other influences to really make this hybrid platform. It shoots really flat, recoil impulse is really nice, quality of parts are really nice. Overall, everything that you're getting, especially for that $2,000 price point, I believe is a value. Now, I'll be critical, it needs to be an optics gun. The fact that they omitted an optics plate on this really is kind of a letdown for me, but there are some aftermarket shops that are offering the service. All in all, I think it's really what the platform needs. And I know the factory is working on an option to have optics ready as well. We all know that CZ and Dan Wesson make really good optics mounting platforms. Overall, I really enjoyed shooting this. Everybody that I let shoot it really enjoys it. The trigger is great, reset is good, it's crisp. The action is really nice. They have this gun really set up really, really kicking above its price point for 2000 for a factory gun. I would argue it's up there with some of my semi-custom high-end production 1911s. 
Like it really is that good. Now, I also forgot to mention in the beginning part of the video that I did receive this as a media demo, which means I'm supposed to return it, but I'm not giving this thing back. So basically now that I'm publishing my video, I'm going to be reaching out to my contact and asking for an invoice because I don't get everything back. Uh, sometimes I buy it if I really like it, but on the other side, I don't buy everything either that I review, but I like this thing so much that I am choosing to pick it up and maintain it a part of my collection. If you guys like the content, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you have any questions about this or anything firearms related, you can send an email to the email address shown below. That is the QA at gunsandtactics.com. And at the end of the month, I have a QA episode where I answer your questions about all things firearms related. Again, that's the QA at gunsandtactics.com. If you want to support the channel, the best way to do so is through our Patreon. Patreon network. We'll have links for that in the social description below. Head on over to our webpage for everything new. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.